Hello, everybody, and welcome to this talk on public money, public code, global problems need global solutions. In the next 45 to 50 minutes, I will tell you about our public money, public code campaign and how free software can help to tackle global crisis, as we've just seen with the Corona crisis, or as we are still seeing this. And um, to first of all, I want to introduce you to the Free Software Foundation Europe. Um, we are a charity that empowers people or users to control technology. And uh, I'm FSFE's policy manager. So in the last months, I've been very active um, around the corona crisis and reaching out to governments and public bodies in order to promote free software and how that's worked. And um, yeah, what are the results of this? Um, this is what I'm going to talk about in the next minutes. So first of all, to give you an impression why free software is so important, uh, especially for governments, um, I have this comic for you here. I guess you are more or less all familiar with the US nuclear chain of command. So there's the president and, uh, but also, and this is very important, the red button. And the main question for this is uh, who installed the red button? How does the red button looks like? Is it also really following this chain of command or does the red button doing anything else. So, and therefore it's crucial that uh, it is transparent and that everybody can check um, what the red button does. And this is um, also true for free software. So transparency is one of the most important things when it comes to free software or also called open source software sometimes. And, um, but there are more freedoms. So it's not just about uh, transparency um, for free software always guarantees you four freedoms. And it is about use, study, share, and improve. So the first freedom is to use the software for any purpose without any restrictions. So you can do whatever you want with the piece of software you got. You can study the code, it is transparent. So just with the example we had at the moment, you can see what the red button does. And you are also free to share the software without any limitations. And also the price doesn't matter. So free is not free as in beer. You can also earn money with free software. Lots of people uh, doing this uh, and uh, also lots of companies. And also very important, the fourth freedom is that you are free to improve the software. You can modify it whenever you want. So this is how you can make the software better, adapted to your specific needs and also as we are free to share it, um, you can give it back to the community and share it again with others. So whenever we have these four freedoms to use, study, share, and improve, then we talk about free software. And it is very important that especially governments are using free software, and I will tell you why. So the first good reason to use free software for governments, public bodies, is about digital sovereignty. I guess you heard of this term in the last years. It became very um, popular in especially political debates. And in general, it's about to establish trustworthy systems for pu public bodies because they must ensure they have the full control over the software and the computer systems at the core of their state digital infrastructure. So whenever you have the full control over the software and you know what the software does, as we know it from the four freedoms of free software, then you have a really trustworthy system and you have the full control and that is about digital serenity. But also, especially when it comes to public bodies, then there's also another issue and it's about money. So public bodies are financed through taxes. Taxpayers' money, it's our money and that's why, especially public bodies must make sure they spend the funds in the most efficient way possible. And also here, free software can help as public bodies have more or less similar demands all over the world and they can share the software. They don't have to pay for licenses. And so that's why um, if they collaborate and um, use free software, they could save a lot of money and that's why they need to use free software in order to spend their funds efficiently. I will tell you more about this in a few minutes, but just to um, have uh, very two strong arguments. It's about public money and it's about digital sovereignty. Maybe it becomes clearer if we compare it to proprietary software. So whenever you use proprietary software, you have no interoperability at all. And interoperability is something very important when it comes to governments. We are sharing data, information and stuff like this across borders. And therefore it's very crucial that you can uh, share these data without any problems uh, between public bodies, governments, and so on. 
also, whenever you are using proprietary software, you're running directly into a vendor login. This means when you buy a piece of software from one vendor, it's very likely that you have to buy other pieces of this vendor as well. And also, it's very important um, that you know that when you buy this software, this proprietary software from this one vendor, you always have to come back to this one vendor whenever you need a change in the software. So whenever you want to update or upgrade, if you want to modify, you have to go back to this one vendor and ask for a change in the software. And this is called a vendor login because there's no free market afterwards once you choose this proprietary uh, software. So and this also leads to unpredictable cost for maintenance, for updating. As I just told you, you have to go back to this one vendor. And this is the problem when it comes to public money and you want to spend the funds in the most efficient way, as I just said, because you never know how much you have to pay for this software in two years and five years and so on because you always have to come back to this one vendor which makes it really unpredictable for, unpredictable for you um, how this will turn out also especially if we see now during the corona crisis i will tell you later a bit more on this there's a low acceptance by citizens when it comes to proprietary software people want to know what happens with their data people want to know what governments are doing it's the same like with laws we want to know the laws we want to see and read the text and um, but with software sometimes it's not especially when it is proprietary software then it is transparent and this uh, will lead to um the situation that citizens won't accept your solution and don't use it or are just <laughs> turning out to be angry afterwards. And also, after, as you have to pay for licenses, um, your investments are just lost. Uh, I mean, imagine you take the money which you spend for licenses to modify your software or um, to improve your software, um, but you don't have the money for it because you spent your money uh, before for just for licenses. and. Um, so that's uh, also uh, a big issue when it comes to money and the efficient way to, to spend your funds. So investments are lost or quickly lost when you uh, just pay for licenses and not in the modification of software, for example. And also, uh, as we've also seen in the, uh, yeah, in the, the last decades, in the last years, a lot there are security issues when it comes to proprietary software. So as you can't look into the code, it's hard uh, to find backdoors. It's hard to prove that, uh, for example, fundamental rights are respected, but also that there is a uh, proper data protection in place and stuff like this. So therefore, with proprietary software always comes uh, a security issue. And so therefore, you should um, switch to the solution, which is free software. When we compare it, we see we have interoperability by default due to open standards. So whenever you are using a free software, uh, it is clear that you can share the data with other um, uh, vendors as well. You have these open standards. So interoperability won't be an issue anymore for you. And this is especially important for public bodies and governments. Also, you are really independent as you have the free license. So you have the four freedoms, which I just mentioned in the beginning, and you can do whatever you want with your software and you can easily modify it and adapt it to your needs. And um, also as sharing is one of the four freedoms, you can share and collaborate together. So which means you can also share risk and cost. You can, um, as I just said, administrations are having more or less the same demand. So it's easy for them to um, just go on the market and say, we both administrations want a solution for this and this. So let's collaborate and uh, buy a solution or do it by our own and uh, share it with others then. So, and this is how you can easily share risk and costs and it makes it also more predictable uh, when it comes to modifying or updating, upgrading the software for future terms because you don't have to go to this single vendor um, but you are free to choose a vendor on the market and you can do it by your own. You can um, um, search for other partners here. And so this is also pretty good, especially for governments. And um, also you have this transparency by default, which is, uh, we will see it also later on. We may talk about tracing apps, for example, very good. And because citizens can see what the software does and they can see if the rights are respected, if um, the software really does what the law says, if the red button uh, is really doing what it should uh, or what it shall do. 
And um, also we uh, have an example, a concrete example here also for you uh, later in the talk. You can involve local partners. Um, as I just said, uh, normally you have to pay for your license and then you have to go back to your vendor if you need changes. Normally um, uh, these are big companies from the US or maybe from China already. And so um, what you can do with free software is to also involve local partners and to yeah foster your um, uh, IT um, market in your region because you can, especially for minor changes, um, just include local partners and they could help here. And um, uh, as I just said, I will tell you a bit more on this uh, in a few seconds with the uh, example of Barcelona where we've seen that it works. And also when it comes to security, it's really important that you have this transparent code so everybody on the world can go through the code and see and check what the software does. And so you can easily find backdoors if you wish. You can um, run bug bounty programs or hackathons. Or, so there are so many um, possibilities once you have free software in place to fix security issues. I mean, in general, free software doesn't mean that it's secure or that there is security by default but you have the chance to quickly fix it. And also if there are bugs reported, you are able to fix them directly and you don't have to go to the vendor before and ask them to please um, make the software secure now. No, you are free to do it by your own. You are free to go on the market and um, search for local partners, for example, who could help you. And also you are free to include citizens um, with projects like hackathons or something like this. So you see, if you compare it, um, it makes really a lot of sense, especially for governments to use free software, but for sure it's also true for every other users on the world like you <laughs> and I mean citizens in general, but also companies and um, so yeah, there are many good reasons to uh, choose free software. And also, again, when it comes to governments, it's really interesting that they comprise up to 27% of the revenue of software firms in the world. So normally you would expect a very strong player on the market who could say, we want this, this and this, we want a, a solution which definitely fits our needs and demands. But uh, the reality is completely the other way around. So it's a very um, separated market, um, governments, but also public bodies, administrations are um, um, procuring software uh, mostly by their own. They are not collaborating. They are not working together. They just buy a license and then they go ahead. Um, but if you just imagine what happens if these 27% um, um, revenue made of the governments um, would be a single voice on the market and especially when it comes to free software and uh, if governments stop to reinvent the wheel again and again uh, that would uh, change the market but also um, uh, the situation for taxpayer money taxpayers money a lot um, and let me just um, for example, go to um, France, um, where they um, yeah, have a, I would say, a free software friendly regulation in place since a couple of years. We can see that there is a major change in the market. So there is an increase in companies that use free software. There's an increase of number of IT related startups. There's an increase in the number of individuals employed in the IT sector. And what is also very important, there's a decrease in software related patterns. So you can see uh, when you decide as a government, as a public body to switch to, to a free software friendly uh, regulation, then this will also um, be, um, yeah, you will see it on the market. It will help your local IT market. And so therefore it's also a very good solution um, in terms of the um, IT market to switch to free software. And as I just said, I also want to highlight the example of Barcelona, where they have even yeah, more ambitious um, free software policy in place. Um, they um, have a law which says they have to invest 70% of their um, budget for software into free software. And um, that uh, led to the situation that from 3,000 companies um, who have been involved in um, um, the procurement procedures and in the coding for the city of Barcelona that there have been 60% of them small and medium enterprises. So you can see these are the local partners I just mentioned, small and medium enterprises. And so you can foster your local market, even if you decide as a city to um, switch to free software. So on all levels, 
be it on an international, but also on a national and a local level, whenever you decide as a government, as a public body, as an administration to bring free software regulations in place, then it will help also your local IT market. So um, to sum up, um, there are so three very good reasons to support free software as a government. So you can have strong IT partners in your region. Uh, you can foster your IT market. You are free to have a software um, that fits your needs, that is tailored to your needs and demands. And uh, it's not just about a Windows business model. No, it's about the software that really does what you need and uh, also, as you can collaborate and also as i just mentioned administrations are having more or less the same demands all over the world you don't have to reinvent the wheel again and again so you can share expertise and costs but also can collaborate in order to make the software better and, and have a, a, a tailored software in the end so it makes uh, so these these arguments are really really strong um, for um, public bodies governments administrations in order to switch to free software so um, let's have a specific look at the corona crisis as we've seen during this crisis uh, in a very clear way why free software is the solution especially um, uh, when it comes to software which should help to tackle the crisis or crisis in general so um, we've seen during the corona crisis that there is a global problem so which is really clear, um, pretty clear and so this global crisis but also comes with similar demands all over the world so the crisis is more or less everywhere the same and um, we need specific hardware and we need specific software to tackle this crisis we need a lot of we need a lot more but when it comes to software uh, we have seen um, that um, especially when it comes to home office or remote working that there have been loads of issues especially in the beginning of the crisis and um, also around these tracing apps we have seen loads of debates that showed us very clearly that the solution can only be free software when it comes to worldwide global solutions so again we have this interoperability to the open standards so this is very important especially for tracing apps for example so if you want to trace um, um, something then it's important that you do it across borders and you just can do it if there are open standards in place and open formats so that you are able to share the data and read the data and make your findings out of it because else you have uh, national silos or regional silos and you don't uh, or you're not able to tackle this crisis then. Also, again, you have the independence through free license. And this is also very important to think about sharing. So, I mean, there are countries in the world uh, which desperately need a software solution, for example, um, for, for tracing, but also for hospital solutions. And they have to go on the market now and have to buy a software. Why this? I mean, it would be way better if there would be free software and solutions in place, which we can also share with others in the world. And also it's about, especially these days, about innovation. So once we have a good solution in place in one country, why not just share it with others? So, and free software makes it easy to share the software across borders, across uh, the world. And therefore these free licenses help to tackle the crisis. And you can collaborate also across borders. And this is also how you can foster innovation. So you can work together. You don't have to uh, invent or even reinvent the wheel everywhere uh, at every place in the world. No, once you have a good solution in place, you can um, share it. But also before this, you can collaborate and work together across borders in order to have good software in place. And again, as we've seen, especially with the tracing apps, um, acceptance comes acceptance comes with transparency so whenever you have transparent systems people are more eager to use the software because they know what the software does if you have a black box um, people would stay away and say oh i'm not sure i'm handing over very personal data to the provider so and if i can't see what the software does i won't use it and so this is also what we've seen with the corona apps it's very important that we have transparent code and that we are also this is how we can in, involve all stakeholders um, because of the full freedom so it's especially when it comes for example to the tracing apps it's not just about having a good coder in place but you also need uh, specialists from the health sector and also from the governments as well 
a legal expert and uh, with the free free software um, for freedoms of free software you are free to discuss openly the best solution and have then a global solution in place which could work around the world so and as i just mentioned a couple of time the tracing apps um, this is a very good example um, how free software could help and it is also a very good example on um, how free software is perceived in governments so far and how debates around free software um, are handled these days so in the very beginning um, where the discussion about these tracing apps have been uh, in the early stage we stepped in with a press release and um, defined um, three demands for these apps and first they have to be used voluntarily they have to respect fundamental rights and they need to be free software in order to check if fundamental rights are respected for example if other rights are respected and in order to see if the software really does what it should do and in also um, to be able to modify the software as we've seen in the last weeks um, there is a need to modify the software and this is only possible through free software so in the very beginning we stepped in with these three demands in the debate we reached out to decision makers all over the world and tried to uh, address the our concerns and um, uh, try to um, talk to them uh, about the advantages of having these apps as a free software but also in general why free software is a good idea and so um, governments and decision makers followed us so for example the world health organization um, released uh, in may 2020 um, some guidelines and they for example said uh, these solutions have to be um, fully transparent and they have to be open source so with our arguments um, we reached out to the world health organization they followed us and so we had the first worldwide organization in place who said open source solutions so free software solutions are a good idea when it comes to tracing apps um, because of the just mentioned um, arguments and also uh, in the european union um, the eHealth network, this is a network of the member states and the European Commission working on health uh, or eHealth related issues, um, released in uh, mid-April um, some recommendations for the member states of the European Union on how to create this app. Uh, you know, Europe is, um, <laughs> I mean, we have um, loads of countries doing their own way and um, still today um, there is uh, no common European tracing app in place, but every nation has their own solution. And so therefore it's important to have this interoperability I just mentioned in the very beginning. And so that's why this eHealth network understood quite quickly uh, when we reached out to them that free software is the only solution um, to make it possible, especially when it comes to movement across borders, to always trace or to be in, this, uh, in, in the position to trace um, um, also across borders. And so in these recommendations, the eHealth network said um, that they have to be, uh, the technical specifications have to be published openly, the source code have to be published, and um, we have to make it sure that it is interoperability in place and that uh, we can reuse it. And also which uh, what makes us uh, really happy that they also recognize that it's good for security and the, um, the transparent code in order to see what uh, a software does. So it was not just about interoperability, but they understood the full concept of uh, free software and named it maybe in some uh, other words than we would do it but still uh, this is an important step also for future solutions so because whenever now um, the European Union is trying to um, do something in the software um, ecosphere then we can easily reach out and say hey uh, you remember the time during corona when you said um, it's about interoperability it's about security it's about reuse uh, why not for future solutions so uh, that's why uh, this makes us uh, really happy that we have this now um, and written and also later on um in um yeah after in midsummer it was uh, the commission um released also implementing decision on that on um yeah for the member states uh, on on the situation how the apps uh, have to be and they are mentioning 
in this document quite a lot uh, these eHealth network recommendation and again referring to the principle of interoperability and that's why free software is the only solution these days in Europe to have a good corona tracing app in place so and um, already now as it is written here the travel restrictions um, are not anymore in place or they are not that hard anymore in Europe so people can travel across borders and we have like dozens of different corona tracing apps which are not able to talk to each other um, the commission just started a couple of weeks ago a first test run on this in order to share data between um, some uh, countries in Europe and they are now going ahead and therefore it was very good that they in the very beginning said these solutions have to look very similar all over the place because else it will be hard to trace um, international or uh, European-wide movements and so therefore this interoperability is crucial for these apps and that's why most of the European countries decided to have a similar and a free and open source solution in place in order to make it possible um, to work across borders. So here we can see with the Corona apps a very good example of how um, our advocating on the one hand works but also the understanding now step by step by governments that it is a good, good solution and um, also we had a huge debate in Europe uh, around this so also it is not just about uh, very um, yeah <laughs> way forward net politic politicians who are um, eager with the digital ecosphere um, but also in general we had very general debates on a very fundamental level that free software is a good solution for these um, um, apps and so this debate in general helped us um, to advocate also in future um, for free software because now we have a good example still I mean uh, if you look at the whole process this could have been faster and there are also some other issues um, but still the idea of having a free software solution in place because this is the only way to have interoperability in place um, this is something which will stay and this will help us also in future debates uh, when it comes to free software and governments um, and another issue we've seen um, during uh, the corona crisis that uh, many countries or even regions companies and so on started to run hackathons so they were desperately searching for software solutions um, also some hardware solutions but uh, let's focus on, on software for now and uh, they run uh, really big hackathons also global hackathons and um, also we stepped into this debate and uh, ask organizers of hackathons but also again decision makers um, that the results of these governments uh, of, of these hackathons have to be released as free software and unfortunately it doesn't work for all hackathons we've seen um, but some of them um, changed um, their, um, uh, yeah, their their calls and said if you want to take play uh, if you want to take part then it have to be software uh, after we stepped into discussion and how we did it uh, it was sometimes quite easy so we went to Twitter and raised the issue because this is also very important so um, sometimes just social networks could be a help here in order to reach out to decision makers and uh, raise your concerns and your 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 point and this is what we what we've done and as I just said with some hackathon has worked uh, it worked out so we con could convince um, the organizers of the hackathons to release this software as free software with this one uh, especially it doesn't work but still I think it's important to reach out to make your point because also in future debates um, it is important that they at least heard about it and that they um, know about the concept and um, that they easily understand what you are talking about and um, especially when it comes to um, software solutions in general uh, I just want to mention that there have been loads of software especially for the health sector in place already before which is free software and it was helpful during the crisis and uh, this is the CNU health project that is an amazing project and um, we just did during the crisis also a 
uh, a special podcast episode on this uh, with Louis Falcon and Axel Brown from the GNU Health Project. And they told us a bit uh, in this podcast uh, which free software solutions are already in place and could be used in order to tackle the crisis. And so this is uh, also something we should keep in mind that there have been a world before Corona and that there have been good solutions in place already before Corona. And so that's why um, this is just something I want to mention because this is really an awesome project. And if you want to learn more about it, just go on their website or listen to our podcast. And um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting what they already have in place and what they have uh, done in the last years. Um, another issue I want to address is uh, the case of remote working. Um, so I guess most of you um, somehow um, had uh, <laughs> some strings connected to the to the situation of remote working, home office, and uh, I'm pretty sure some of you also occurred some problems during that time. And um, also we try to help here um, users and together with our supporters, uh, which I want to thank you in this place also, um, we um, collected in a wiki uh, the best free software solutions for remote working. So if it just, uh, is it um, shared pets, for example, or video conferencing tools, and so on. So we have a, a, a living document. So um, it's uh, still uh, in a, <laughs> it's it's still uh, working. So whenever uh, you see another solution, another free software solution, uh, which should be in the wiki, um, please reach out to us or just uh, add it in the wiki. And I think this is also something uh, very important to not just say, oh, um, you should re uh, use free software, but also to help here with concrete examples. And so so um, especially we, but other organizations. I mean, we are somehow very familiar with remote working already before the crisis still. Um, some things had to be tested and some things had to, uh, had to be reorganized also for us, but especially also for our um, supporters. And they helped us here in order to collect uh, these solutions. So um, you can um, yeah, just go on our website. You will find it there or directly in our wiki. And um, please also feel free um, to add uh, solutions if you have them, uh, if you have um, some in place, because I think this is also very important to present solutions to the users out there um, that there are good and uh, very good uh, free software solutions in place um, already. And um, something what I want to also address here is that we've seen, um, especially during the crisis, I mean, it, generally happens often, but especially during the crisis, in the beginning of the crisis, we have seen that there have been loads of software companies around the world offering um, their software somehow for free or with um, specific gimmicks or something like this. And they sometimes called it free software. And um, I think this is very important to distinguish between free software and freeware or something else. Because as I just said, free software, open source software is just when the four freedoms use, share, study, and improve are guaranteed. And so um, therefore, I just want to um, go through the most um, dangerous um, um, things I've seen so far on the internet or we've seen so far on the internet um, around offers of uh, free software, uh, which are not free software in the end. And so if you see, for example, offer which says um, this software is for free, but time limited, then it is not free software because you will end up uh, in the situation that you have to pay fees and licenses, uh, uh, cost for the license after this um, time limited period. So it's clearly not free software um, as you have to pay after a time limited period and the code is also not free or something like this. So this is clearly not free software, but something else, maybe freeware, shareware, whatever. Um, also, we have seen uh, loads of commercials stating that you can use the software for free, but only for a limited number of workstations or limited number of users. And also, again, this is clearly not free software because it's very likely that you have to pay fees for using the software 
um, once you are growing, for example, so uh, once you want to have another workstation running with the software, then you have to pay. Um, but also just uh, imagine you want to upgrade or update, uh, or especially in this case, upgrade your software, then it's also very likely that you have to pay for all workstations uh, one day if you want to continue to use this software. So this is also, again, clearly not free software, but something else. Um, then again, it's um, something similar uh, to the both uh, um, uh, examples I just presented. Uh, if the word trial is included in the description of the software, then it's also clearly not free software because after this trial period, you have to pay the full fees for the tool. And so it's clearly then again, not free software, but something else. The same is true for the situation that, uh, and this is something we specifically seen during the Corona crisis so far. Um, if the software is only available for specific sectors, for example, hospitals or schools. Um, so also um, um, a situation where uh, companies uh, said they want to help here, but uh, in the end, it's about uh, their business. So uh, what looks like um, a very good offer today uh, will also end up in a vendor login tomorrow. You have to pay for the software one day. Uh, and this is also, again, clearly not free software. Free software would guarantee you the right to use it wherever you want, not just only in a hospital or in a school. So again, this is not free software and it's very likely that you will end up in a vendor login if you are using um, such a um, such a software. And um, the most uh, strange thing I've seen so far is that you can win a license uh, and it was also framed with the term free software. But uh, to win a license is clearly not free software. So there is still the license in place. Uh, all other users have to pay for the license. You have to pay for the license also if you want to upgrade uh, or if you want to have uh, your future software of this vendor. And so also if you are around the lucky winners, uh, it is uh, also very likely that you will end up in a vendor login. So um, please be also very careful with these. Um, commercial, so it's clearly not free software uh, to win a license and then say it is free software. And um, then we've also seen the situation that some uh, companies said they will make the tool open source. So this is for sure uh, not free software because it is currently Obviously not, because if I want to make something open software, uh, uh, open source or free software, then it is not at the moment. And also be careful with these kind of promises. So even if they release then uh, this um, tool as free software, it might uh, only include parts of the software. So you have to carefully check if the uh, whole software package is released as free software. And also, um, again, if there uh, need to be upgrades, for example, or you get an older version uh, of the software, you might to upgrade soon. So be careful with this and check out if future solutions uh, will be also free software and if the vendor is uh, changing their um, uh, strategy for, for open source. Sure, there are companies um, going more into the direction of free software, releasing more free software. This is also quite good, but um, still, Always be careful with these kind of offers and uh, clearly check if the four freedoms are guaranteed um, because else uh, you might upend uh, in a vendor login with all the problems, uh, unpredictable costs and so on. So even if you are in a situation of a crisis, it's better to take some time and um, to have a solution which is also, or which makes you fit for the, for the future uh, as well and not just only for today. So always think about um, future and not just about today. And um, as we did, um, I mean, uh, in order to give us a chance to, to be a, a heard voice in the debate, for example, around the Corona apps, um, these tracing apps, we've been in place uh, with a campaign already before the crisis and hundreds of organizations and tens of thousands of people demanded that publicly financed software developed for the public sector must be publicly available under a free software license. And we've seen, especially this, with this crisis, again, that it is now even more important than ever before. And I hope that there are some learnings and we hope that there are some learnings 
And um, we've seen that our public money, public code campaign, which we started around three years ago now, uh, was very helpful during the debate because we were able, uh, as I just said, with the support of the hundreds of organizations and tens of thousands of people who, who signed this call, um, to reach out to public administrations and governments already before the crisis and tell them about um, our campaign, the advantages of free software I just mentioned in the beginning of this talk. Um, so what we are doing with this campaign is to reach out directly to decision makers all over Europe, but also around the world and uh, demand that uh, if it's public money, it should be public code as well. It's pretty easy. So actually we want legislation requiring that publicly financed software developed for the public sector must be publicly available under a free software license. And um, we re released a lot of campaign material. For example, we also have a dedicated brochure for administrations in place in order to tell them about procurement procedures, for example. Uh, so how do they practically uh, can um, procure free software, but also what solutions are already in place. We have best practices, examples, and so on. So this is a dedicated brochure for decision makers. And during the last years, we had uh, loads of successes with this campaign. For example, the biggest conservative party in Europe, the German CDU, um, followed our demand. Um, also in some election and coalition treaties, we have also the term public money, public code. We have seen loads of votes. And also we are happy um, that we not just have NGOs as supporters, but also administrations um, supporting and signed our call. So far we have uh, administrations from Sweden, Germany, and Spain. Uh, for example, the city of Barcelona signed our call and this is how we try to reach out and to promote um, the idea of free software around governments and this helped also a lot during the crisis as we had already contacts in place and uh, so it was uh, kind of easy to reach out to us and to get uh, heard during the debate and this helped a lot in order to make sure that um, uh, at least for example the tracing apps uh, have been released as free software. Still, I mean, it's an ongoing process. Uh, advocating for free software in governments is a long-term project. And uh, we know that there's a lot of work to do for us in the next years. Um, if you want to help us here, you can uh, be part of the Free Software Foundation Europe for sure. Um, you can help us to spread the word. Uh, you can join a local group. You can add, for example, as I just mentioned, to the wiki uh, we have in place. Uh, in order to um, yeah, um, talk about free software solutions, which are in place, but also um, we have um, campaign material for activists in order to help them to reach out to their local administrations and convince them we have material here in place. So I think it's, um, it's important that we all work together here. And as you know, many small people in many small places do many small things that can alter the face of the world. And I think this is especially true for free software. One of the freedoms is to share. And um, I think this is uh, something which is important. So let's share, let's collaborate, let's work together and make uh, free software um, the basic uh, fundamental um, principle for procurement procedures in governments. And I think this could help us not just in crisis, but also for the future. And as we've seen during the crisis, this is more important than ever to use free software in gov governments and to, um, yeah to have digital serenity. And um, so this helps a lot. So now I'm open for your questions. Uh, thank you for listening to the talk and yeah, bye-bye.